G'day folks, Corey Hunt, I hope you're really well. So this video is called seven SEO ideas that anybody can implement. Now, that's not necessarily saying that you should do these. These are just a collection of things that I've been pondering over the last week that pretty much anyone can do, which will help them rank higher on Google if you apply these things and allow some time and do it in a thoughtful way. So I don't usually recommend you just grab random ideas from the internet and apply them to your blog or website or whatever. However, these ones are, are, are useful because I'm doing them for some clients and I really think anyone can do them in a controlled manner. So what I'm going to do is run through the seven and look, I'll just get my head out of the way so we can look at the content. Let's just get into the work. Okay? So the first one is to add a mini FAQ to your post. So what that means is take an existing post that you've got that talks about a certain thing. So you might have written an article about whatever, and then have a look at it. Go and Google that and then look at the Google results that will also have people also ask down the bottom. In the middle there, they'll give you some other ideas. So add an FAQ to the existing post based on what Google is telling you. This is a bit of a tactic that I've seen around the internet. I've been using it myself and I've definitely noticed traffic increases on the websites I've used it. So we'll go, we'll go through that again. Let's say I've just done a, a sample here, how to grow quads. Just a bit of a gag, but how to grow quads if you're into your bodybuilding, for, for example. And you'll get some results and halfway down the page you'll see people also ask so you take those four or five topics that they give you the alternative questions that they suggest and then you add those to the bottom of your post with a short answer to each one or even a link to another place on your blog or your page so you're just adding stuff to your existing content that google is telling you people are also looking for if google's telling you this stuff it's probably quite useful, so we should listen to what Google tells us. The second idea is, just roll down there, is to put some checklists together. And now you can do this in two ways. You can do them as a standalone post, or you can add them to existing posts. People love, look, I love checklists. People love checklists. So, for example, if you Google set up a WordPress website, you get a whole bunch of stuff. But usually in the featured snippet up the top, you'll get this checklist, how to build a WordPress website. And it'll just list it out step by step. One, select a plan. Two, set up your domain name. Three, install WordPress. So if you use checklists like that, people like them, people find them interesting. And that can be a reason for Google to rank you more highly or for people to suggest your page to other people. Especially if you've got a how-to page. And at the bottom, you might have a too long, don't read Here's the checklist at the bottom. So that's an idea that you can use and you probably have ample skill to do that because you're an expert in your field, okay? So the next one could be, the next idea is to build some infographics for topical subjects. Now, using something like Canva, there's other ways you can do it. You don't have to be a designer to build cool infographics. An infographic just means an image that's got information that tells people something in an easy way rather than explain it or write it down it's a tool that people look at and go aha i get the message for example the ones i see quite often are real estate data you'll see all these real estate graphs and examples and things and what happens is people go and use these and share them go oh check out this so that's a way that your website can get more traction is to build some sort of an infographic or graph or data use something like canva and hey you might get on to a, a topic that's usable again and again like the real estate websites have their formats they use and they just put in the new data each month and boom people go there they find them they share them so that's an idea infographics the next one is to build more internal links on your site to your most important pages so for example i have a blog post about on-page SEO. That means the things you should do on a page to ensure Google likes it. So I've updated it recently to have a little contact us link. So by the way, if you need a hand, here's a link to our contact us page. And also another PS, we've got a new resources page here as well. So these are what's called internal links. They go from one page of my website to another page on my website which helps google to identify those as key pages on that website 
lots of websites still don't have lots of internal links. People don't really understand why they're important, but that's how Google works. They kind of crawl around the internet looking for what points where, what links to where. And when you've got a page on your website they're constantly linking back to, Google goes, aha, uh -huh, that's important. So, and this is something I do for SEO clients on my own sites as well. I look at the pages and go, what's the important page on this site? Can I link to that page more often? So it's really easy to do. Uh, just one tip, make sure you, uh, when you link them, they open in a new browser so you don't lose the page you're already on. And that's not, you, you might choose not to do that, but that's something I would recommend. Okay, so the next one is tip number five of the seven is to expand your articles with more words and deeper explanations. So go back a few years and all of us SEO guys talked about the ways to win on Google being a mix of technical build, backlinks, and content. As time is going on, content is winning more and more and more because Google wants to give people the best possible search results. So at the end of the day, you know, if a site isn't technically perfect but has a way better explanation about something than another site, which is technically better, they will link to the better content. So we must create the best content possible. So what I'm doing at the moment for my own site and for my clients' websites is to go back to their websites and look at their highest ranked articles and see how I can expand them with better explanations, deeper explanations, higher word counts, more dot points, easier readability. I'm trying to make the best articles possible. So you can do that on your own website. Go back to your website, look at the important blog posts, etc and think, how can I make these better? Because Google wants, <clears throat> pardon me, to reward better. Now point six kind of is a follow on from that, and that's simply to revisit all of your posts and update them, or for example, redate them. So I've done that today for a couple of my older blog posts. This one, for example, used to get a ton of traffic from Google, but it's slipped a little bit, so I've gone and updated the date to a more recent date. You can see there it now says May the 4th, 2022. But I've gone through that article in particular because since I first wrote this article, there's been a key change. What used to be called Google My Business is now called Google Business Profile. So I've had to go through the whole article and just tidy up some of the acronyms, phrases, dates and things because once it looks out of date, Google won't put it up the top. So it's important to go back through your website and just look at posts and see if there's any words, phrases, dates, etc. that are no longer up to date and simply fix that. All right, I'm sure that makes perfect sense. And number seven is to add videos, images and links to other pages to existing posts. So for example, I have an article called How Do I Verify My Business on Google? And I've gone through that uh, today and I've linked to various places including this one here is where it says Google business profile that's actually google.com slash business so do you think Google likes us linking to Google yes they do so that's a very obviously Google has the highest domain authority of any website um, so if you can link to high domain authority websites from your website that's good because Google says aha uh -huh, this article must be good and reputable because it links to Wikipedia, it links to LinkedIn, it links to Google. So I'll go through and do that. I'll also add images if that can help to improve the article and I'll also add videos. So for my own blog posts I'll often uh, add a YouTube video at the bottom of my own and of course YouTube is a Google asset and it helps to intertwine all together. So they're the seven ideas. I've tried to keep this video under 10 minutes, so I will stop talking real soon. Very quickly, guys, all seven of these ideas have merit. Don't rush out and just wreck yourself tomorrow and try and do them all at once. Maybe do one at a time and see how you go, see what it does. And of course, if you've got any questions, comment below and I'll come back to you and give you some advice because I want to see people do these things. Sometimes we spend money, waste money invest on things that don't work but SEO is always a good long-term play so it's important to keep learning and doing and experimenting. All right guys I hope you found that useful we'll talk soon bye for now.